My name is Chef Kay and I am the Executive Telechef of Kitchen This, live virtual cooking classes. Today I've got a great recipe for you. It's a crowd favorite. My entire family loves it. I'm talking about 10 layer chocolate cake. You heard right, there are 10 layers in this cake. I'm also making it today because it's my birthday and I'm in isolation, so why not make one of my most favorite things? I cannot wait to bake with you all. Let me know what you think in the comments and let me know if you have any questions. Let's get started on our 10 layer cake. Come on. I'm gonna walk you through the process of making your cake batter very quickly and then I'll make it. The first thing you're gonna do is cream together your softened butter and your granulated sugar. You're gonna cream those together in your stand mixer with a paddle attachment until it's really nice and light and fluffy. Then you're gonna take your room temperature whole eggs, you've got six of them, and you're gonna add those in two at a time. Don't add any more eggs until those two have been fully incorporated into that butter and sugar mixture. Once all your eggs are in and it's very evenly incorporated, toss in your vanilla. Vanilla is incorporated. Now we're gonna alternate between your sifted dry ingredients. So you sifted together flour and baking powder and then added salt to it. And then you've got some room temperature or just some milk that you've warmed up on the stove to add in. The warm piece of these ingredients is super important because when things are warm, they marry together better. So you get a more even incorporation in your cake batter. So after that vanilla, you're gonna start with a third of your dry and then a third of your milk and then a third of your dry and then a third of your milk and then a third of your dry and a third of your milk. You get the idea. You just wanna go back and forth so that you don't have any clumps or lumps and everything gets very evenly incorporated. Once you've got that batter done, set it to the side and I'll meet you right back here. If you use more, you're just doing yourself a favor. If you only have one to three pans though, that's fine, you can reuse them. But you wanna prep them with parchment paper and then some pan spray. So you need a really nice circle to go on the bottom. If you do like parchment paper cutouts or if you have parchment paper that comes off of the roll, I will show you how to get it into a really nice square like that one. Usually it's more rectangular shape. You need it to be in a square. So I take the parchment paper and I fold it so that I get this triangle here in the corner and fold that down like so. And I'm gonna cut off this bottom portion. So all that bottom portion, that rectangle at the bottom, I'm gonna cut right off. Now I've got a really nice square that I can turn into a circle. Fold it. Same place where I folded it before, like that triangle. And then I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna fold it so that the top and the bottom meet. And then I'm gonna fold it so that the sides meet. And then I'm gonna get whatever the pan is I'm using and I'm gonna measure, so I take it right at the center and press, press, press it down until I measure that radius of the pan. Once I've gotten that radius of the pan measured, I can take this out. I've got that little point that I folded there. I can cut this right around and then unfold this and it'll be a really nice circle that fits perfectly in the bottom of your pan. You wanna do that nine times. It really, really works if you have a piece of parchment for each layer of the cake. So nine, 10 times. Here you go, this will be my 10th one. I got that square again. And now I've got that triangle. I fold and then I fold again. I fold 
one more time just so it's easier for me to cut. I got my empty pan. I take it right in the center of that empty pan and I'm measuring the radius. So much math and cooking, I love it. Now that I've gotten that radius measured and I've got my little point that I folded, I can take that right out, cut it right around, open it up, and it fits perfectly inside every time. Go ahead and get your pans ready. Have your batter and at least four of your pans with parchment paper and pan spray all over them. I usually do my pan spray on the bottom of the pan and then I sit my parchment paper in and then I spray it. I'll meet you right back here. Okay, so you prepped your pans, right? Spray in the bottom, then you put your parchment paper on top of that, and then you spray on top of the parchment paper. Insurance policy, and it's needed. These are a little bit more thin layers than what you're used to from a cake, so you want them to be able to flip and fall right out and have that parchment on the underside that you're able to peel off really nicely. Now that you've got all your pans ready, you want to take them and either weigh or spoon your batter in there. So if you're weighing, you want to get about four ounces. I recommend weighing for all of them. That's the best way you're going to know that it's totally even. Each layer is going to be the same as the one above it and the one on top of it. So I just go into my stand mixer with my cake batter and I measure about four ounces right into the center. I don't try and spoon around or anything like that. I just do four ounces right in the center. As soon as I've got four ounces in the center, I go and I do another one. When you've gotten three to four of these, I mean, I recommend baking four at a time if you can just because it makes it easier on you when trying to get them out of the oven. Last one, about four ounces. Got your offset spatula? You're gonna come in and you're going to spread that batter evenly over the bottom of the cake pan, as evenly as you possible can. I usually come around just like this. Do that with all four layers. don't want to leave the salt out. Salt in your dessert ingredients, oh my gosh, it brings the flavor profile to a whole nother level. And then your vanilla. I use vanilla bean paste, but you can use vanilla extract. It's one to one. So if you use a tablespoon of paste, use a tablespoon of extract. I am just going to keep this warm. You want to keep it loose enough so that it will spread over your cake and I'll show you this is exactly what I'm looking for if I know if it's done when you very first started out if you would have stuck something in it it would have all just run right off of the side but now when you stick something in it it's going to stay and coat the back of it perfect so it is just spreadable enough that you'll be able to get it on your cake but as soon as it hits those cold cake layers, it's gonna set up really nicely. Speaking of cake layers, let's look at those. I'll scoot this up a little bit, keeping it right on there though. Cake layers came out of the oven. 
and I let them cool just a little bit. You wanna take some type of sheet pan or a rack, something, place it on top of it and then flip it over once you've let them cool just a little bit. And what I do is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna flip each of my cakes right on top of that one as to not disturb them a lot with the parchment sitting right in between. And I also wanna get them out of the pan because maybe you're gonna reuse this pan. Came out completely clean. Hope you can see that. That's because you sprayed and you put your parchment circle. So go ahead, get all your cakes out, out of the pan so they can cool a little bit more. And then you're gonna start layering while other cakes are still in the oven. So now begins the process of assembling. Patience, patience, patience. So it's my birthday, I'm in isolation. If you are watching this way later on, this is during the midst of COVID-19. So happy birthday to me. So I had time to be patient and ice my cake. That is the biggest thing when you are icing it. You want to ice it with patience. I do about two ounces of icing right in the center and then use your offset spatula. Use your offset spatula to just spread gently back and forth. You can ladle in, you can use like a cup measure, whatever you would like. That icing should still be flowing just enough that you're able to comfortably ladle it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then once you've got it just right to the side, you don't want it to overflow on the side. Sometimes, you know, when you're icing, maybe like a three tier cake, you'll take and you'll let some of that icing flow over the side. This is not that kind of icing and this is not that kind of cake. So you want to take your time when you are doing so. You may even just want to use a little quarter cup measure and do that and Depending on the viscosity, like the thinness or thickness of how your icing got, you may need a little bit less. So you really just have to be in tune. You gotta feel it for yourself and see what you need. I'm gonna go ahead and start icing some of these layers. Yay! When you're icing, slow and steady wins the race. Don't forget that. Your icing's still warm. I go right near the center. I didn't even pour all of that out yet because I'm gonna give myself an opportunity to kind of smear around, spread around, and then I'll go with the rest. If your icing is too runny right here, make sure that you go ahead and turn it back on. You don't want anything flowing off of the side of the layer. The layers are also cool enough now that when the icing hits it, it's gonna set up really, really nicely. A Little bit more. Y'all, this is, when I say a crowd favorite with all of my family, it is with all of my family. If there is an event, there better be 10 layer cake. That's all I gotta say. Nice, just enough, and I'm almost right to the edges because when you put that next layer on, it's gonna press down on it a little bit, and you guessed it. It's going to push that icing out just a little bit. So you don't want it to spread it all out. I've got this layer here. It's safe and on a plate that I'm going to turn over. So I turn this over. And place that layer down. And repeat the process. Patience, patience, patience. So right in the center. Now you'll notice we're only on layer two. I thought it was gonna 
go around to the sides a little bit more. Eventually, the cake does dome a little bit in the center. That's just purely because of how many layers you're creating. That is okay. You have to carry on. After layer four, you'll see it'll be really exaggerated. It'll dome in the center. Doesn't matter how straight all your layers were, how even they were, it'll still do that doming. You gotta carry on. And that's enough for that layer. I've still got layers in the oven. All right, keep going you all. Stack gently, ladle that on, start at the center, go out side to side, side to side. I can't wait to see it. Woo, I've been busy icing, have you? So this is where I have gotten so far. This is 10 layers. Cake, icing, cake, icing, cake, icing, cake, icing, cake, icing. You know, however many it goes to. It is literally as big as my head. At this stage right here, I stick it in the freezer. I don't try and finish icing it right here. It's too delicate. You really need to give it time to set up. And the only way to do that is to stick it in the freezer. This is like my 10 layer cake version of a crumb coat. We think of a crumb coat whenever bakeries do like a just smear of icing on the side and they put it in the freezer so that sets up so that when they come back to it and they ice it on all sides, none of those cake bits and crumbs get into the finished layer of icing. And that's what I wanna go for here. So I've got like this 10 stack, 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 stack of cakes. It looks great. You could eat it as is, I won't lie. But you wanna have a finished product. So here we go. This is what we've got so far. You can see it pretty straight. I'm liking it. It's going into the freezer. When it comes out of the freezer, you want to use the remainder of your hot chocolate icing. Delish. And I do the same technique. I'm going to put icing in the center and I'm going to come off to the side and then go around. Sound good? I hope so. I can't wait to see how yours turns out. Bye y'all, and thank you so much for spending my birthday with me. Just having y'all for a little piece of it was absolutely wonderful. My name's Chef Kay, and you're watching Kitchen This.